when people have lack of dorsiflexion or their foot isn't able to come up towards them as efficiently as we'd like, we can have a host of problems from difficulty with squatting, getting down in that low position, getting in and out of a chair. So one of the things we want to work on is helping the foot ankle glide into that position a little bit more. So one of the things we'd want to look at is see if we have restriction in the front, one of the bones in, in the ankle that should be moving nice and freely in there. Sometimes it can, can get blocked in there and limit some of that motion. Or we can see if we have tightness in the back of the ankle in the Achilles tendon where these two common calf muscles insert. So one of the ways we can do that is we can put a little bolster under the knee and that takes off the top layer, it puts it on slack. The calf muscle that we commonly think of, that's called the gastrocnemius, it crosses the knee. So if we put the knee in a bent position, it slackens that so we can get the deeper layer. You can start to see how much passive movement we have. That stretches that out. See if that might be the restriction. And we can always ask the individual if that's kind of what they're feeling or if they're feeling more of the front side of the ankle. And then we can also look at the, I'm gonna take this bolster away here. We can also look at the foot and ankle with the knee straight. We can look at that top layer, that gastrocnemius, and we can see if that's a little bit tighter or if the foot goes farther, kind of helping us decide if it's the muscles and which layer it is, or if it seems to be more in the front. For this individual, it seems to be more in the front in one of the, the bones called the talus. As the foot rocks up, that talus should glide down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give with the little webbing of my hand, I'm just gonna give that bone a little glide as we start to bring that foot into dorsiflexion. And that can be a mobilization that's really helpful to get that foot and ankle moving through its full range of motion, helping restore her ability to get down in a deep squat, getting up and down from the ground or chairs a little bit easier. So we can do the mobilization with the movement, or we can take it kind of to that first little bit of restriction, and then I can just glide down, trying to get that joint to cooperate just a little bit more, give a little more input into that foot and ankle and the nervous system to help with the motion we want. As a follow-up to our manual therapy where we're mobilizing and stretching into that ankle and joint, we can do what we call a mobilization with movement, where we have the individual going into a half kneeling position and the ankle of interest in front. What I'm doing is I'm using that web space on that talus or that bone that should kind of glide out of the way. I'm holding it down and as she rocks that tibia forward, we get that natural movement or what we call dorsiflexion movement. So a follow up to our manual intervention would be a mobilization with movement where the individual is having more active participation. One more. And then again, we can always retest and see how she's feeling and how much motion she has after we do these interventions.